Alex? Adam? And Daniel! <laughs> I am back. Thank you. And Thank you. Daniel, you're here. Happy to have you back, my friend. Yes, I'm happy to be back. Thank you guys for holding it down. I mean, you know, we tried. I mean, you're lucky because you missed a lot of Vancouver talk, but you didn't escape all of it because we're going to top. <laughs> yeah, because we're going to have to have some more Vancouver talk in a minute here. So <sighs> we were going to talk about the All Star game, the skills competition, the whole weekend with a special guest. Um, that's going to happen on Sunday. So. You know, there's not going to be any all-star stuff talk, which is going to be kind of strange, but, you know, they're with us here. Can we talk about so, one thing from the all-star game, though, at some point? Is it Mitch Bardner's suit? No. Oh, no. I don't know. Is it Sidney Crosby? I, no, it's uh, Gary Bettman's press conference. Oh, okay. I mean, we can talk about that if yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that I, does I, relate back to Sidney Crosby. Yeah, sure. Okay. He obviously mentioned the playoff format. Well, let's just talk about it then. Okay. So... I guess the prelude to this is a couple of weeks ago, there's this tweet that comes out basically talking about a fall in viewership on the ESPN for hockey games. I think, what was it, like 33% was it off the top of my head? 22. 22%. The cold coffee, a lucky number. You'll have to see it. Uh, no, you don't. But um, a lot of things came out of this. The Carlo Kaliakovo tweet where he somehow made it about analytics with the equation joke. Um, the playoff I- format. Attention. I feel like that was more about the salary cap, but yeah, probably analytics. <laughs> Listen, it all comes back together. People blame. I'm sure Alan Walsh has said plenty to say about the salary cap, and he has been tweeted out. Did he tweet out about like the golf PA or so? Anyway, it's, it's a whole thing. Sidney Crosby even had some stuff to say about playoff formats and that, saying we should go to one to eight, and all this sort of came together that the day of the series of All Star Games because it's a tournament. Gary Bettman had a nice little talk with Ron McLean. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I used to look forward to these interviews. Now I just get angry watching them because I just don't know what I expect from Gary Bettman, but it just somehow always annoys me more. So he did this with Ron McLean? I mean, I watched the one he did with the press. I didn't, oh, yeah, I, did too. I didn't see the Ron McLean one. Oh, okay. Oh, well, this boy. Is- no, that's okay. Oh. Tell us what he said uh, to Mr. Ron McLean. Well, so you know how Ron normally, you know, it's very rapid fire and it's somehow very awkward between these two because like, you kind of can see they don't like each other. Yeah. Um, It was really dumb. So at one point, Ron brought up the mention of, hey, we only had the Battle of Alberta three times. Mm-hmm. And then somehow Gary made it into this whole thing. And then like the whole, the idea of less games came out and he said, well, if you want more games on oh, like, Oh, but everyone wants to see one team, you know, like wants to see your squad play everyone once. And now we can't lower the schedule because then you can't get more games in your division, even though it's like, man, like just is classic work around garbage. And then like, he was asked about the, the Rangers and, and, and the, and the flyer stuff with the pride jerseys. And guess what he did? He just, he went around and said, Oh, we still support this, but oh, other people have all these stupid and just his normal Gary Batman garbage. That was just word salad, word salad. He was afraid to take any sort of side of anything because he's Gary Batman. So That's it was the I same. Thought. So it was the same thing as the press conference. Right. <laughs> literally, yeah. literally everything you said, he already said at the press conference. Yeah. It was rehashed, and that was the big thing that just happened. Nothing, nothing helps happened behind the scenes right no, now. No, no, your light didn't fall. Yes. Your light no, didn't no, fall. did not fall. <laughs> uh, um, no, I, there, there was a comment, and the reason I brought this up, there was one specific thing in his thirty-five minute press conference that really irked me. Um, and so he's talking about. The question is asked about the World Cup, or he was asked about um, the I, something about uh, something that Luke Tardif said, the head of the Double IHF. Oh, great, yeah. And he then he gets into the Olympics, and he somehow starts talking about how, like, well, obviously the players want to go to the um, want to go to the Olympics, but uh, and he essentially goes on to say that the Double IHF. The IOC and the and the uh, or the local organizing committee, which I guess is Milan for the next Winter Olympics, um, need, are going to have to make some compromises. 
And it blew my mind that he never, he, there was no mention of like, they're going to be at a negotiating table. It's like, they're going to have to do the, the compromising. We're not. We're not going to do anything. They're just they did their end. They did their end of the, the deal already. They're just what, uh, yeah. It's not they're our, just it's not, our, it's not a responsibility. Exactly. It's it, it's not the NHL's responsibility. It irked me to no death because it was like do. It's still he doesn't. It's like there's no understanding of what going to the Olympics does for the sport of hockey. And I like so, to say I know this is a, a stretch here, but it's what I believe. Like. Guys want to play in the Olympics. I know it's disruption in the regular season, but there is always a tryout, and you see stars get cut from U.S., Canadian, Swedish, Finnish teams, mm-hmm. right? And I just think sometimes about the NBA, where yeah, we we've talked about before, like in the past, the dream teams, but there's players that are like, yeah, I don't want to go. They just don't want to go, and it's in all the of Can- all of Canada. Yeah, up until recently, all of Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not going, um, but the. <laughs> It's not, it's obviously not the players. Like, it's so clearly not the players. It's been established. It's not the players. That's the frustrating part. It's like, it's not like, you know, with the NBA and like, we'll use Canada as an example where like a lot of those guys just didn't want to go play, right? Like, that's just a fact. These guys want to go play and they're being denied the opportunity to go play. That's the frustrating part. So... Basically, if I go get here my Gary Bettman dictionary, um, no, it's not Dance of Dragons by George R. R. Martin, Where is Winter Winter? Um, basically, what I translate that to is not um, Shiraz was Miranese, a humble, humble of birth. No, that's I'm reading ahead. Oh, uh, would it be his version be negotiating with the dragon? I mean, you know, and then the dragon burns him alive. Um, no, no. But, so what I, if I read this in the term of Gary Bettman, basically, um, McDavid's never going to play in the Olympics is what I get from that. Maybe. Correct. They're, they're and not we're, going. And we're going to get some half-assed World Cup of Hockey. With the all due premier respect. premier world with, showsmanship with, of hockey. With ah. all due respect, we are going to get a half-assed Team North America, Team Europe, World Cup of Hockey that respectfully doesn't matter when they when the player were when a player retires when a player retires and they get a olympic gold medal that means something yep. that means something yeah. when players retire and win a world cup medal no one cares no one's go- that's not an achievement that okay sorry that's uh, harsh that's an achievement but it's nowhere near worth what winning a gold medal is nowhere near that's yeah, what gary right. bedman's created it's it's just there's nothing i hate more than seeing a collaboration between you know the IIHF and the nhl cuz i just think these are two organizations that don't know how to grow the sport that we love so much and they'd be like, ah, oh, you know, we got these youth hockey pro- No, shut up. You don't know how to do this at the basic level. Like, we can't talk about the All-Star. Like, listen, when we get to Alex, I feel like we're going to talk about some good stuff because he was Bob- yeah. Okay, well, it's, it's Alex Baumgartner. Alex Bob Gardner. Who we're talking yeah, to yeah. on Sunday. There's a surprise. Yeah. But, like, that's an in-person thing, and I'm sure he's going to have some good stuff to talk about it. But it sucked. Like, it sucked, right? Like, it, it was bad. It sucked. From everyone, who, was, from everyone who wasn't there... It was not a good viewing experience. I'd like if, to say I forgot it was on Saturday, the game. I don't blame you. I always Seriously, forgot. If, if you want me to trust you to put together a prestigious tournament, right? The cup, the cup doesn't count. Cup doesn't count. You've had that. There's prestige there. If you want to try and put on some worldwide competition, when you can't put together an all-star weekend at one of the markets you have bent over backwards for, by the way, if you can't succeed at doing that, how do you want me to trust you? Because here's the thing. What helped the World Cup before was that you had it in Toronto, that last one. Mm-hmm. You know, that was great. I went to some of those games. Thrilling stuff. Okay? Let's, that was good. That was fun. But I don't trust you. You have given me nothing to give you an indicator. Sorry, you, you've given me nothing where I can believe and give you the benefit of the doubt. And Gary Bemmon doesn't doesn't have that. He's never earned it. There's a siren. Gary's come to get me. He sent the people after me. 
like I, I, I just, I, I, I didn't know this quote existed until Alex sort of brought it up here. I, I hate Gary Batman. I, I hate, I can't stand. I hate everything about it. He just, it just kills the game for me. I, I mean, it just makes me so sad, man. And they're gonna bring in someone to head the PA, who's probably never gonna, not even gonna punish. It's gonna be a goddamn loop de loop. It's just gonna be a, a never ending cycle of lazy and just fourth overall. Fourth of the big sports. Come on. Uh, and and I loved his answer about the one to eight format. It was just classic. It was what you was, know the, the, it, it, it it's just going to be too hard. It's just going to be too hard to change. What does that mean? Have. <laughs> Gary, you don't have to change anything. You just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Like it, it's you can keep the divisions. Like. Uh, but the divisions now don't mean any. Like, cool, you finished first in the Atlantic. You finished first in the Metro. You finished first in the Pacific. You finished first in the Central. That means nothing. Respectfully. Respectfully, it does. At the end of the day, that achievement, no one's putting up a banner. No one no one cares. It, it's similar to the NBA, right? Like, no if you finish top of the... Uh, I don't even know the division names in the NBA. Like that's how much they matter, right? Like, and that's my fault. But I, I just there's nothing to change. This isn't that hard. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He didn't mention like anything of like a play in, right? No, no, like, the no. NBA doing that. Okay, so no. yeah, we go back to the original format that they've done that for so long. You know, here's the thing. We talk about this. I think largely on this podcast. Um, personally. At least Alex and I, we don't care about the playoff format personally. Like I, I'll speak for myself, especially. I, I don't care. No, I don't uh, care You gotta either. beat good teams. However, I will sit here and I will acknowledge the fact that you know there's probably a route, and I hate bringing this up when I talk about sports, but it's important. The proper business decision to get the most out of your series and make the best money is probably going a one through eight format. And let's be fair, it does give more sort of reward to doing better in the regular season. Okay, let's just let's let's say that. And uh, like, and again, this is not something we personally harp on. Again, we we don't care about it that much. Yeah. I'm fine with the wild card system, but you know, we're in the minority. Fun fact, a, a lot about that. We're we're not. We don't have the popular opinion there. And, and by the way, I like. I think it's before I throw it back to you, Alex. I think it's pretty safe to say that. Um, I. I don't even think the three of us really want to play in either. And I don't think no. Gary's going to let that happen. That, that might be the only thing I agree with, with Gary Batman. The, yeah, uh, don't play in. I, listen, I'm an agent of chaos, man. Let's do one to 16. Like screw it. Like I, I'd be so down for just some absolute madness. Everyone. So it'll never happen. And I understand why, like the, the logistics would be insane, but tell me that wouldn't be a little entertaining. One to sixteen. I'm just throwing it out there. That it, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. But well, in that format, like who would Toronto face right now? Like I, I don't know. Minnesota. I, I, <laughs> like that. And there's the a little bit of excitement. Just change it up a little bit. But it's never gonna happen. Like when they brought in the okay. When they brought in the wild card format, was the whole thing not to create rivalries? Was that not part of this plan? Yeah, Am I, I know, yeah. Has it? Uh, by, by the way, sorry. One thing they would play the Colorado Avalanche. Jesus. Yeah. Oh wow. I still. Oh, no, sorry, I'm, really... I'm dumb. I'm looking at 16. Sorry. Oh. Let me let me go look at this. Yeah. <laughs> They're not first. That's Bo Oh my! Imagine Boston and Colorado in the first round. Oh my god. You know that, that happens in baseball because you know how like there's the National League and American League. Yeah. So like they've been series where it's like because it's technically still the same league, so it's like. The Met, the New York Mets versus the LA Dodgers, and they keep to go back and forth every time. Jeez. Washington, Washington. Oh, that'd be fun. But if, they, if the Caps got moved up one place and they allowed the team having to fall down, it would be the Oilers. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be fun. <laughs> that, 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 I would not go on Twitter for the duration of that series. It's just not worth the the headache. But um, but the the point I was making before was like, has it created honestly? It might have pushed rivalries forward, but has it actually created rivalries? Is there a rivalry we can look at and say, this is because of this format? 
I think it depends San who you Jose ask. Vegas? Yeah. Pardon? Um, San, did you say San, San Jose, Jose Vegas? Vegas? Okay. I mean, for a little while, Tampa and Columbus. <laughs> yeah but but it, i yeah. i rem- at the time wasn't it they were still going to be the eighth seat they just yeah. crawled into the playoffs they would have been the eighth seat like even mathematically wise like has it i just all the rivalries i can think of like pitts okay let's say pittsburgh and washington played multiple times under this format but they also played multiple times under the past format yeah like, like- you know what i mean like I don't think the Islanders and the Penguins they faced her like three times in a row. They're not natural rivals. I mean, I guess it heightened the Bruins Leafs rivalry. That's one. That's one but example I, to think of. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I don't consider that a rival. Like that's okay. a one sided rivalry. Like from our from my stand from a Leafs standpoint, it's like yeah, I don't think the Bruins think about the Leafs. Okay. Frankly, I don't. Except Brad Marchand, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so, so, when so. he comes to Toronto, and that's it. <laughs> he he can hmm. get away with it, though. Yeah, yeah exactly. He can he get gets, away with it because yeah. he can go to whatever market and make a scene. He uh, he really made Steve Dangle kind of kind of snap a little bit. I don't think so. I he think broke Steve a bit. No, I don't. He, I I don't think so, guys. I I think that's extremely blow, blown out of proportion. A lot of that LFR had to do with Marshan. He sounded very upset. In it. Okay, did you I listen like to the Steve podcast did. afterwards? Because he did not sound anywhere near as upset about it. Because I think he cooled down a bit. But I feel like in the Ooh, aftermath, yes, I I'm aware. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure. That's just how these things work. Just you know, I just. He got a little bit under Steve's skin. Yes, I mean, that's he does it with job, everyone because he's Brad Marchand. Exactly. Um, let's move on. Yeah, enough about Gary Gettman. I hate Gary Bettman. Oh, it's 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 at this point you got Sidney Crosby saying we got to go one to eight. Come on, there's a Sidney Crosby guys. He's the goat. Except you know the Athletic find out who number one is on their list tomorrow. It's probably Wayne Gretzky. Because he is the goat. Shane, he's not the goat. He's not Lidstrom eight. Move him up a bit, boys. Hasik over Wall? Come on. Come on now. Can you have you have you been keeping up with that list? Here and there. I've only like read a few of it. Um I think I stopped at Scott Stevens. And then what I'm like, I, I'll catch up. And then I okay. never did. Yeah, I think it was like 78. You're not gonna like where um you're not gonna like where Pro Dur is, by the way. It's okay. I won't say it's but... about the heart, not the analytics. <laughs> I mean, yeah. okay. Wow. Okay. It's about the eye test. No, I'm not using. It. I'm, not, I'm not bringing Carlo that up. Carlo Yakovo side. You don't want the math <laughs> equations in your hockey anymore. Man, what a silly tweet. What a silly tweet. It was like it was like he was he was kind of making sense, and then he added that, and it's like oh, I don't know. Didn't Drew Doughty also say he's like I just go out and play when they like, ask him about the yeah, advanced numbers. Good. But Drew Doughty's a gold medalist and a multi-time cup champion in the North. He job. can do whatever he wants. Kolyakov is a broadcaster now. You can't do that. But like Doughty can do what he wants. You know. Okay. You know what was one fun moment? That's from the All Star game. I'm going to mention <laughs> during the um, hardest shot. I think it was hardest shot. They had Eric Carlson mic'd up, and Ovechkin was going for his uh, his attempt. And Ove- and and Carlson's like, yeah, he scored his 500th goal against us. I remember trying to block the shot. I obviously failed miserably, and so did our goalie. So, <laughs> love Eric. Was Carson's that Marty goal. Jones? I imagine was he a shark oh, no, at the bro, time? Was he? Man. No, no, he would have been a uh, send. Was it that's, Devin Dubnik? Uh, that's yeah. yeah. No, Man, it, I it, it, I, whatever. It, it, or at least yeah, legend. Where was Carlson? He probably. He probably. Ov. Like yeah, that's that's what be, I had to figure out. Yeah. It might be Leafs legend Aaron Dell. Uh, I mean, the if they play, if they started Dell versus the Caps, they were kind of asking for it. Yeah, they were. Honestly. Yeah, hold on, we can just look this up pretty easily. Ov okay. five hundredth goal. He Fox probably score. he was probably know. he was probably a set. That's a. It was I, the set. Oh, yeah. Andrew Hammond. <laughs> yeah, uh, Capitals Ovechkin buries a power play goal pass. Ottawa sends goalie Andrew Hammond. Uh-huh. Hold on, um, let's see. January. Oh, no. Mute. Uh, this was January. The video itself was from January 11th, 2016. So was that his run? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's gone quick. Hey, it was in Washington. It was a five-one goal. 
tough year for the Suns. Tough year. Um, let's see. Wait, that that, no, well, that, that was that was, was the this, was that wait the, the Hamburglar run? Wasn't that 2017 or was that 20? You know what? That's not important right now. It's okay. not important. I won't search. What it is up. important? Sorry, I won't search it up. Keep okay. going. Okay. All right. Good. So let's talk about Bo Horvat. Get it out the way. He signed before playing a single game for the New York Islanders. Gets a contract extension. It's the max eight years. He got more than JT Miller. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, I I didn't think he'd get this much. Um, Pat I was Moore, shocked. What a great. Sorry. I was shocked because like maybe because I I look a lot at Lou Lamorello's track record with the Devils, where uh, he used to always say like I see my team as a family, and you know I pay guys based on how they're going to fit with the team. And then he never over really paid. He didn't overpay anybody per se until like Ilya Kovalchuk or I like, mean, I, was, I was about to say, Daniel, this, 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 this seems on brand for Lamorello to me. But like that's... before that, like he, you know, I guess maybe just the guys just bought in like Rafalski, Niedermeyer, Stevens, Broder, they all took under market value, long-term deals. And Horvat did not do that here. No, he didn't. It is eight point five million AAV. The total worth is sixty eight million dollars. It will kick in next year, by the way, when um Horvat will be twenty eight. Um listen, first off, I'm happy for there's no signing bonuses in this, by the way, which is very of course it is. Of course it is. Um no trade clause. I believe it's a full one for the first four years and the back half. Um, is a 16-team modified no-trade list. Um, I think it was Rachel Dory made the point. This is this is apparently very easy to buy out, which I thought was funny. Um, and the best part about this, Lou Lamarillo's quote about the deal was, uh, it's too much money and too long when he was asked about the details because obviously the Islanders don't share that information <laughs> themselves. Uh, this, this is just so that quote is just so funny to me i i lo- like the, listen i'm not even i can't even like crap on it it's that's what we want man right like i'm not i'm not coming back no blah blah blah, blah, blah. No, no. The, the quote it's going against no, his nature absolutely yeah. that and that's that that's the thing he's he's going against his nature and we all want gms to talk and he did it so i can't really I can't blame him for speaking. I think the quote's absolutely hilarious. And I think everyone in that room knows, like, no, agrees. So, um, oh, yeah, it was everyone laughed at it. Yeah. Yeah. And like with the contract, that, uh, yeah, no, that they they should have traded Bo Horvat. Like the, the Vancouver Canucks obviously made the right decision. Like if that's what Bo Horvat was looking for, he was not going to get that in Vancouver. Trying to see, he makes he makes as much money as Mika Zibanejad, more than Hurdle, more than Couturier. Um, Couture's contract's a little old. Um, obviously, Patrice Bergeron's old contract isn't very comparable. Um, it's a million. This is a comparable. I, I like. He makes a million and a half more dollars than Nazem Kadri. I would have expected Horvat to be in the sevens. Now Kadri's at straight seven. Um, I still can't believe Tyler Sagan makes nine point eight million dollars. By the way, like that's the sort of vein he's he should be is around Nazem Kadri. But so here's the thing: the Islanders giving up as much as they did, being you know the fact that they wanted to get like I don't know how much they were almost destined to have to sign whatever Horvat wanted because they gave up so much for him. You know, mm-hmm. they couldn't give up that much money for it to be a rental. I think it's pretty safe to say Lamorello, it was basically reported that they felt they could get the extension done. Yeah. So the problem I have with the code is I'm not complaining that it happened itself. It's just I don't want to. Here's what worries me is it's believed he's in the last year of his contract, right? I'm going to come out of this from an owner's point of view, which I don't do often. If I have a GM who I don't know if I'm going to have passed this year. No, it's Lamorello. It could be done already, the extension. We just don't know. He's gone past this year, maybe. He's just given up um, first-round pick in this year's draft. He has given out some pretty big money. 
uh, including to a guy who's you know not too far from the bad age of 30, to a player that hasn't always been known for his foot speed. Um, so, you know, he's just given up a pretty good prospect in Ati Rati, however you pronounce it. Um, I, I would just be worried that there is this much money tied up. Especially when Lamorello mentions, we'll worry about Sorokin's deal when the time comes. Okay. That's going to be pretty important, though. I just, oh, God, that's an alarm. Sorry. Alex, turn off your alarm. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I just, I have a lot of concern if I'm the owner and being like, all right, Chuckles, um, you put yourself in this situation. And, you know, it's just, here's the problem, too, is we talked about this from the Islanders' point of view. They're still a middling team right now. Now they haven't played. There's not been a lot of hockey since the All-Star break, obviously. It's just, um, they had to do it, but they put themselves in the position, so I can't feel bad for them. I respect yeah. being ballsy enough to make the trade because, you know, it's like that's content for us. I love to see it. It's just um, I don't want to repeat myself too much from the original episode where we talked about the Horvat trade, but I just I'd be very concerned if I'm Islanders ownership over this. But then again, they had to give the thumbs up for this, so I don't actually feel too bad. I'm concerned in the fact that they're paying like and I could be wrong about this, but they're paying Bo Horvat of this year. That that eight point five assumes that he's still going to play that two way game, the way he is right now. But when we look back on the other seasons he's done this, you know he's always been great defensively, but he hasn't always been that top six you know score that you would want every game. And I know it was with Vancouver; they they didn't always have the best support for that. But for me, it's just. Is he really gonna keep having this type of thing? Like we've no, we don't know what he's gonna look like in the system, and we've seen guys perform very well in the system. It's just another guy. He's twenty eight. You bring him up, and he has he has like that hot and cold to him. Like I believe he had like what thirty three points one season. I know it was a shortened season, right? It was like fifty seven games. Uh he had thirty nine points in fifty six games. It was the it was the uh. It was 2020, 2021. Okay. And again, it's another long contract where we talk about the Islanders. He's like, what is this team going to really look like when those other guys age as well? Because they signed guys for a really long time. To, to answer your question about, is he going to repeat this? Probably not. Like he's having a career. He's going to have, he's having a career year in goals. He's already at 31, which is what he had last year. And He's going to hit a career high in points for sure. He's seven points away from 61, which is his career high. Like, it, he's historically been somewhere between, let's say, 55 and 65 points. I think we were saying last episode, you're good to get at least 20 goals out of him if over an 82-game season. It's a lot to it's a lot to ask for him to repeat this. And it doesn't help that and maybe it's different this year. I'm I'm not 100 percent sure, but under a historically generally speaking, a lower scoring, more defensive team, asking him to repeat this is to me very difficult. I agree, man. I I agree. You know, it's just um, three more years after this at Pajot for five million dollars. Um, the Horvat extension, obviously, Barzell goes up to nine point one. So three more years after this for uh, Andrews Lee. Uh, it's just there's a lot of money on the books. There's a lot of money. Case Zeke is in that five year deal. Never forget. What uh, is Brock Nelson getting, by the way? Brock Nelson six. is getting six. That is accuracy shooting champion Brock Nelson. Um, can't wait to talk about that with Palmer because I'm kind of angry about how accuracy shooting went. Okay. So what did I know that was the thing? Okay. Someone who's going to be pretty happy looking at this is going to be Mr. Dylan Larkin. Yeah. yeah. So Dylan Larkin. Noted captain of Detroit Red Wings. And this is on 32 Thoughts, the podcast. It was speculated that basically maybe right now, if Larkin wants to play in Detroit, he's probably going to have to take a pay cut. Um, they're not going to be able to give him this eight spare chain sort of contract. But look at Dylan Larkin now. Obviously, he's at 6.1. 
million in a sort of at the end of a uh, of his contract. He is a centerman, and you know he has had a higher offensive upside than Bo Horvat. He's hit seventy points before, sixty nine last year. Nice. Um, it's fair to say. Yeah, maybe not the sort of Horvat also has a thing of he's got that on ice sort of playoff style of his game, but it's pretty safe to say that Dylan Larkin is probably looking in the same boat, and that's going to be long term in the eights at least to start. You know why? Because they gave Ben Sherratt that money. Man, I will never forget. Also, you know what's another one is I got to double check this. Um, someone mentioned this to me, and I could not stop laughing. Uh, so Andrew Cop. Is in the first year of a five-year deal, making five point six million dollars. Yeah, I forgot about that. Go man. look. He he has five goals in yeah. forty-eight games. Holy crap! How many assists? Uh twenty-one. Yeah, okay. twenty-six points in total. Nice Which thing. is like, if again, if you look at what he has been over his career, that like, with the exception of the last, I. I two years where it was just it was over half a point a game this is what andrew cop was before i said he had five goals right yeah and Sherrod has four yeah yeah also a minus 19 by the way uh who ben Sherrod? <laughs> yeah oh yeah makes sense um oh god i protected first my um Yes, as if I know anything. Like I saw Frank. Like, listen, I think this was more of an opinion rather than a fact or uh, insider information. Was that like Frank Cervelli was talking about him get getting a contract starting with a nine? That's not going to happen. Like, I, 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 maybe if he gets to the open market. Listen, there's teams out there who are going to spend. I wouldn't be surprised. I. I can't imagine him getting nine million dollars with the Detroit Red Wings. I could be completely, completely wrong. And I, I, if he signs it for a nine by eight, uh, eight by nine contract next week, like screw it, I'm wrong. But I think if you look at what they're asking him to be or what he is, I, I just I can't see them giving him more than eight, and that's. Uh, I don't think they're gonna. I don't think if he's if he's a Detroit Red Wing past July first this year, I'd imagine it's for eight million dollars or less. When do it's we have kinda, the this? Sorry, go ahead, Daniel. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, it really depends. Like, what does Detroit view themselves as right now? Like, how much are they gonna rely on a, a lot of the younger guys? They have these other contracts where. I, I always thought they were very questionable. Like when they went on that spending spree and I don't know why they did go for it. Maybe just to fill in the roster, but like there's so many years on those. Like we have David Perron. We already mentioned Andrew Cobb and Ben Sherratt. W wouldn't you want, like in my opinion, like wouldn't you want to have a your captain locked down, you know, giving him what he and his agent view as fair value going forward to just, I don't inject something into that system because did they expect to like contend? Did they not a contend at least, or like did they expect to at least try to make it to the playoffs? Like did they expect to have better goaltending. I, I, I don't think they expected to contend considering the division they're in. Um, I think they expected maybe to be have more of a push for closer to a wild card spot, essentially playing competitive games closer to April. That's just not, unfortunately, happening. Like they're frank, they're a middle team in the wild card race. To be honest, uh, or at the moment, so. But I, I don't think they ever looked to be a team that was going to contend for a, a playoff spot. Like the, you just look at all the teams in front of them. Are they really better than them right now? And I, I think the answer was no. From the beginning of uh, from the beginning of the season, I, I think that answer was no. I think like I think we've seen the first wave of young guys come up, and I, I think they have more. I think there's their drafting and developing is what's going to gonna have gonna have to 
keep pushing them forward. Like I, I don't think this rebuild is over. Like no, no one's come out. It's not like Pierre Dorian who came out and said the rebuild's over. No one's, no one said that. I still think they're a few years away from from being good, like really good. Mm-hmm. That, just that that's that's it to me. It just the way I'm seeing is just you know I'm I'm looking at age of the other guys they got with all that money. I'm looking at who you'd want to have moving forward when everything comes together. And would you rather have like a Dylan Larkin than again I'm gonna say like with an Andrew Cobb or at a David Perron? You know what doesn't help if there is a cap crunch here, by the way? Right now, buried in the AHL. Listen, we don't know. Hit my phone, sorry. And we, we may never know what exactly is up between the Red Wings and Jacob Verana. He makes $4.1 million this year. $4.1 million. Sorry, this is, I assume, the buried cap hit. Let me double check yeah. his exact one. Which his is exact five point, yeah. And Nick Alberga did have a tweet. Um, my heart, my phone is very sort of messy right now. But it was, oh, here we go. For those waiting on a Jacob Arana recall, don't hold your breath. Well, anything is possible. I'm hearing it's highly likely he's played his final game with Detroit. Likely scenario, trade or off-season buyout. Now, obviously, he was in the player assistance program, um, completed it, and came back to the team. He's been in Grand Rapids. I, I I want to again. We may never know, or if we do find out, it'll probably be from Jacob Verana after he's left the organization. But they're gonna have to if they buy him out. Then listen, the Anthony Manta trade is one that looks bad for both teams. They gave up. I want to say they gave up assets to get Nedeljkovic, who was also in the minors. Ben Chirot was a disastrous signing from the moment we saw it. Um. Maybe I'm being a bit hard here, but I'm I'm wondering if it's start if it's time to start criticize, criticizing Steve Eiserman here. Because this isn't costing them wins, and I get it, but there are little moves here that I'm starting I'm, I'm starting to be like, okay, you're Steve Eiserman. I acknowledge what you did in Tampa, but I gotta criticize you on the bad two here. And they're starting to see some bad moves. I'm not blaming him purely for Verana because we, we don't know, but there's some smoke there. So with the buyout, if they did it in the summer, 1.4 this uh, next season and then 1.9 the year after. That's not bad. That's not. It's not bad, yeah. But I, I think if you're looking at the, at the moves they made, sure – they've made some very questionable moves or a couple questionable moves. Fine. Alex and Helkovich didn't work out. Ben Sherratt didn't. Sorry. Ben Sherratt didn't work out. But like, if I'm being on, like under, okay. Ben Sherratt after it has four years, including this year left. Are they, go, when are they going to be competitive under that contract? Uh, maybe when there's two or one years left, probably. If yeah, all goes like well. I just I don't know what to and the issue I have is like I don't know what to look at this team as of what it is right now. Like they have the, they have young guys who are, are coming up. Obviously, like Mo Sider, uh, you look at Lucas Raymond. Like uh, it's just what else? Like more so, where are the? Um, rest of the pro- where are the rest of the pro- prospects? I think is the question. Like they're there, they've been drafting. Didn't they have a bunch of draft picks last year? Like they're there, they're somewhere, but they're not here yet. Like that's we don't know the plan, right? That's what I think this issue is. We don't know the plan. Like what? What? When is this team going to be competitive? Is the plan not though? Then is is there not a few steps back? Because then it becomes a problem with. If Larkin goes, and I could look very stupid here because sure, knowing sure. Steve Eiserman, you know, a contract extension can come out of nowhere. Right. But, like, who the hell in that system is going to be the next Dylan Larkin? What is Dylan Larkin? I think he's safe to say he is a, a top six center who okay. is incredibly fast, a great, the kind of player you want in today's game. 
who is capable of getting you 30 goals and 70 points. Is he Those a number one out. center? Is he a number one center on a contending team? Ah, uh, um, no. See, he he's that weird category where is he better than Nazem Kadri? Maybe, but he's not like Nathan McKinnon. It's no. that very weird center category. That very strange. God damn it! That's my. Would you co- okay? Would you compare him to a William Nylander on the like on the way the Leafs are right now? No, nah, I think Nylander's no. nastier. Okay. Oh, so you mean role wise? Yeah, role wise, like that. Like, like if, if he was, if you put him yeah. on to a top team, that would be yeah. like a second line role. I think that's fair. I think that's very fair. Or okay, I'll use another. I know this is a basketball comparison, but like he's a he's not a Vince Carter. He's a Chris Bosh. You're you're talking to the wrong guy. I can't, okay, I can't. Okay, he's um. I'll use a more recent one. He's a Pascal Siakam, not a Kawhi Leonard. Okay, yeah, that's sure. Like, sure. Like, like the the thing with the, the thing I look at with Dylan Lark is like okay, so I listen. I'm taking what Frank Cervelli is. I I'm just using it as what I think think he's asking for. Like if he's asking for nine million dollars. What does me like? Okay, let me ask you this: Mika Zabinijad, first line center, or sorry, elite center, like that. That's yeah. a guy who. That's a guy who's uh, first line center on a contending team, right? Yeah, I think he's turned into that. What is? How much does Mika Zabinijad make? Eight and a half million dollars. Yeah. Like you're saying, you're you. I'm making more than Mika Zabinijad. Yeah, like that's, that's, that's a, a tough sell that, for me. Yeah. Right, like that that that's that's the thing is like you're right, he's in the middle ground of being a number 1 center and being a number 2 center on a contending team. Like I I I think he's in that middle ground and that's the tough part to figure out what on earth this guy's going to make and where he's going to go. It's tough to justify like nine a contract starting with nine if Sarah what Sarah Belli's saying is accurate in terms of what he's asking for, what he could get. Um let's go to another player who's just signed a very, very nice deal for himself. And if it starts clearing out well for the team, it's about fourteen million dollars for both their top centers. It's a bit after that. Um Dylan Cousins. It's not Cousins. I always got to remember that. Dylan yeah, Cousins. Yeah, I always, yeah, I had strange, that strange. Yeah, yeah. Uh, signs a seven-year extension with the Buffalo Sabres. The cap hit is $7.1 million. Modified no trade clause, five-team no trade clause in the last three years. There is a $2 million signing bonus for next year, and then it is nice and clear after that. Um, he is really having a coming-out party uh, this season, and um, – Listen, I think that if that's going to be your guy behind Tate Thompson, that's a. I think that's very nice, tidy business from the oh, Sabers, yeah. which is yeah. weird to say. I'm not used to the fact that they're competent now. They're building a foundation. They are, man. So what they they did they did Thompson last year, and everyone had questions about like, is he really legit? Then this year he got better this season. Um, mm-hmm. Skinner is looking all right. They've rehabbed him. Alex Tuck, I don't think they signed him. I could no. be wrong. No, no, they didn't. Um, but they re-signed, who else was it? Uh, Matias um, Samuelson. Matias Samuelson, a big part of their future, too, with a pretty reasonable number. Like Ukapeka Lukanen starting to come into the league and play, play some games. Play some, you got to get some wins for my fantasy team. But they still have the GOAT that is Rasmus Asplund, by the way. Can't mm-hmm. forget about him. Um I'm liking that, by the way, Darlene's eligible for an extension this offseason. That's going to be it. Here, that's what, this is what nice. what's nice, too, is those little sort of the money they're saving for these younger players and getting them early. Um, all that spare money is probably going to Rasmus Darlene. Probably. Probably, yeah. But exactly. Good, maybe, for, good for both sides. Maybe Owen Power if they do it. Oh, God, yeah. Him. Yeah. No. Okay. Owen Power. Man. Buffalo, I'm happy for their fans. Yeah, they're doing Dude. well. Like, I don't know. Like, Uka Pekka Lukanen, I think it's someone that, uh, it's like they haven't had this guy, like, someone like this in a while. I know it's taken, you know, like, Linus Allmark they didn't have this hype in Buffalo. So yeah. they'll, they have someone for the future. So they'll be okay. I think that was one of the biggest things. And I think now 
it's just great, right? Like you see these guys who are performing so well for them, and then they're taking these extensions that I, I think they're pretty reasonable for what they're getting paid right now. And to, to see Tage Thompson the way he's been playing, and he's it, it looks like a bit of a discount in a way. Well, hell, before the injury, man. yes. Oh yeah, man. The Atlantic's gonna be a guy, a nightmare. It always yeah. a, it's never going to be. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. There's no room. There's just <laughs> no room. Um, to finish off the show, I want to do something special. Okay. I want to read to you guys the letter that John Tortorella sent to Philadelphia Flyers season ticket holders. Now, I cannot remember the last time a coach <laughs> wrote a letter to season ticket holders in the National Hockey League. You, you sort of get like from the team. We've had letters from the Rangers letter couple. That yeah. was that wasn't like just the, sort of like that wasn't from uh God, who was their coach a couple of years ago? It's in San Jose. Um, David Quinn. Oh, what's his name? David Quinn. David Quinn. David Quinn. David Quinn didn't send out that I mean, no, you know, it was, was management. Yeah, it was I mean it may have been ownership. <laughs> you know, it may have been James Dolan. Anyway, never know. um <laughs> I, I've never seen this happen before. So we gotta read it here. Um, by the way, shout out to Kevin Hayes being asked to be Australian. He's going to say anything to Tortorella, and he's like, I'm probably not going to say anything to him. Context Lovely. before we read this. Lovely. To our, to our valued Inside Edge members. Cool. Thank God you're season ticket holders. At the beginning of the season, we set out to build a foundation for the future and a standard for how we're going to play night in and night out. Now that we're halfway through the season, I want to share with you what I've seen from our guys. I've been very pleased with our team's effort, drive, and hunger to compete. Perhaps more importantly, and I hope you've noticed this too, I love the way this team has consistently responded to the challenges we faced as individuals and as a group. Throughout the locker room, our players are showing a full commitment to getting it right. We also have some kids here who have impressed me. Some of them have taken on heavy minutes and big responsibilities, and they're going into the impact players we need them to be. The development of our young players is absolutely crucial for our future. This season, I've challenged the veterans of this team. Really? I've been very happy with their response. Beyond the stats, <laughs> they've shown a willingness to adapt, compete, um, and lead our group both on and off the ice. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. and I want to be clear about this. We're not there yet. (laughs) (laughs) This year was the first step in building the future of the Flyers and restoring our reputation as one of the most respected teams in hockey. We're in the thick of the season right now. We're going to see how our group responds to the challenges that lay ahead with a grueling schedule. Alex, can you please get their schedule up for me? It's a grind, but all that is extremely important to see what we have and what we need to move forward. I screwed that part up. My apologies. That excites me because I can promise you this. The answers to those questions will come. You and I will find out together and we'll be an either, even tougher team for having gone through it. That's because we're in the midst of establishing an identity, not just any identity, but identity that reflects the city of Philadelphia and the proud history of the Flyers organization. And to end it bold, Bolded is the text. We need you with us. We're going to get this right. We're going to make you proud. And together, we're going to remind everyone what this team is all about. John Tortorella. Did he really write that? I don't know. Listen, man, he might have. I believe believe it. (laughs) Okay, this is what he's going to find. He's like, you know, we're not there yet. And he starts naming because of these guys. No. (laughs) That's that. That's how yeah. you know it would be John Tortorella. Yes. Um, I have <laughs> that part schedule. was edited out. Yeah, yeah, maybe exactly. I have their schedule up. If you, I Please, can go through. How I can bad go through. Is it? Um, March does not look fun. Uh, I'll read off some of the teams: the Rangers, the Lightning, oh. the Hurricanes, the Golden Knights, the Sabers, the Hurricanes again, the Panthers, the Wild. That's March. Uh, teams, yeah. yeah. The rest of February, February, sorry, is Edmonton, Nashville, Seattle, Seattle again, Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Montreal, New Jersey. Like it's a March is is tough, and then like yeah, the end of the mm-hmm. season is is a bit slower. 
the, the April essentially. It's a bit slower. It's just a lot of games. They're playing one, two. They're playing seven games in fourteen days in April. Not like that's that, average, but just a lot. Yeah. See, here's what worries me. Right, is every year we have that one team that overachieves at the end of the season. This was Ottawa last year. And the Coyotes are famous for this too. Is they they every team goes into their building or goes and hosts them and they think this is a bad team. We're gonna not take them seriously. And then that bad team gets it gets a win out of it. And they go on a hot streak. And then they give this sort of vibe that we're gonna come back strong next year. And they do something dumb in the offseason. The standards get higher and then they flame out and it's even more embarrassing the following the following year. That's what I'm worried is about to happen to the Philadelphia Flyers. Didn't they already do that, though? No. That was the start of the year. They were okay. like, everyone knew it was going to come back. Yeah, yeah. That was the one. Everyone was like, yeah, this isn't. Yeah. Also, I mean, like the must- offseason stuff they did before, like Rasmus was to line in. I mean, Ryan Ellis injury, but and then they, they doubled down and got Tony D'Angelo. <laughs> They doubled down <laughs> yes. on the offense. Yeah, <laughs> like you're just. Yo, yo, we got. You need a defenseman, <laughs> just not one who plays offense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of, of 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 defenseman, I gotta check something. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> Rass is just the line and is up to two goals. By the way, nice. Uh, can I just add on before we continue? So I don't know if you saw Charlie O'Connor. I uh, writes for the Athletic. Uh, Flyers writer. He uh, said, following up on yesterday's letter from John Tortorella to season ticket holders, the Flyers informed them today that the three April home games will be on them, meaning that season ticket holders will get a credit for those games they can apply to their 2023-24 ticket package. Say that again. Uh, They're they're... they're essentially... Paying for the last three home games of the season and then applying That's, it. Um, listen, the, as a Hab season ticket holder, the only time I've ever been credited games in the three years I've been a season ticket holder, three, four maybe, was when COVID shut down the season yeah. and they lost home games. That yeah. is the only time I have ever seen the Habs at least credit their season ticket holders. That is extraordinary. Yeah. And we all know season ticket holders are the most important fans to organization. That that is um I didn't know that Alex. That is uh oh, yeah. I just saw it that's earlier. Something. I've never wow. heard of that before. That's I mean now they make sure people do go. So I mean that's Yeah. <laughs> I mean that last part about being bold and we need to do this together. This is a we don't see what this is. That is um I can't that's all that's that's pretty pretty something like i'm trying not yeah. to the, say something. you know what i mean that's that's fascinating yeah the cynic in me is like man those season ticket renewals must be pretty not good right now yeah um that's a, that's not good. yeah but whatever let's let's go back to the letter because i think the letter is the <sighs> in, important thing uh in all of this we're not um, there yet <laughs> man it's like it's so again bold uh, would be the way the way of putting it. Like at least it's honest. Like let's the, yeah. the thing with the Philadelphia Flyers uh, for the last uh, couple years, pretty much ever since um, ever since Chuck Fletcher has become general manager, has been they can't admit that the team isn't as good as they think they are, and I, I think this letter. Now, again, John Tortorella is just the coach. He doesn't make the player per- like the player personnel decisions in that sense. It's an admission of, hey, we're not good. Like we're just not we're not there yet. Uh, we're a long ways away from from being there. So, like, I, I think this is a big admission from a from a team who in the past has just really not wanted to admit the flaws that are that that are in the team and like John Tortorella has been quietly hinting at this for the past since he's been introduced as coach but this letter kind of just lays it all out for us yeah and I'm not surprised because you mentioned Chuck Fletcher the type of trades he's done 
this is the same stuff we had in Minnesota before he got fired. Do you remember that? Yeah. What were some like? What were some of the things he he's like? He, he did, did the in- Parise and Suter oh, okay, deals, okay, okay. Um, and then he assumed that he could just keep adding on a bunch of guys here and there, and it it just like it was either a middling team or it's like we have to do drastic changes for that. And right. I agree. I completely agree with what you said with Philadelphia that they have solid players, but they just they just don't come together the same way you think. They at least, at least they think they should be because it's not good. It's not looking good. Um, I, they they talked about a retool on the fly, and we've mentioned that before also in the off season. I just when I think when you have a retool on the fly, you assume that you already have a core in place, and I don't think they have that. No, I think they thought they had a core in place. I I. I like I, I don't know what the core is there. Like Kevin Hayes, but it seems like that he could be gone, and like they're gonna buy him out. Like they, it, it, you don't really know. JVR is gonna be traded. Like then, then you get a little bit younger. You look at Konechny, Joel Farabee, Owen Tippett, who they got last year, um, Morgan Frost. Trav like even Travis Sandheim is 26. I did not realize that again, but like he can be a part of that. Provorov, Cam York, like Carter Hart. Like it's just there's a lot of they're in territory mm-hmm. where similar to where again Chuck Fletcher put the Minnesota Wild. They're in middling team territory where yeah they could make the playoffs and you know if they have john tortorella as coach at that time they're going to be a damn difficult team to to play against probably but um they're in that middling territory of what are we and then just end up with 15th 16th overall every other year again minnesota wild yeah exactly like they're (laughs) that's the territory they're in right now like they've been in if they actually commit to doing what they should do then we're we're having a different conversation we're having a different conversation here but like we'll see like we'll we'll see what we'll see what the trade deadline brings and then i think this summer can can be a really interesting one for the philadelphia flyers with absolutely no inside information with that, we can finish the show by talking about the Habs and Leafs. Uh, no, we can't because they haven't played and they don't play till Friday and Saturday, respectively. So that's it. Um, welcome back to the show, Daniel. Thank you. Happy to have you back. Uh, it was not the same without you. Um, we're not far from the trade deadline. Under a month. Which, you know what, guys? This is my least favorite time of the year. You know why? Why? Oh, it is going to be nothing but the worst. Like this is when you start getting a lot of the beat writers and that getting retweeted for every little trade rumor and the YouTube thumbnails and the clickbait. It's just gonna be awful. It's fun for the first week, but then it starts digging in and there's speculation and nothing's gonna happen because it's the trade deadline for the NHL and it never does. So well, maybe one big move. Timo Meyer is going to get moved. That'll be fun. Maybe Chickering. Who knows with the Coyotes? Um, but I hate this time of the year. I hate it. What day of the week is trade deadline this year? Uh, what day is trade deadline? Like number wise? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna search it up I'm, real uh, quick. Why? Well, yeah, we're not. Yeah. March third, which is a Friday. Oh, oh I don't have class. So Wait. are we just Alex? Are we booking it off? And uh, I don't. We're gonna so. be recording no. from the morning until no. three. If if you guys are off, we'll hang out. Yeah, exactly. If you want? Okay. It's if you guys can get it off. We'll of see work. what happens. Yeah, we, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We, we, we will see. Um, <laughs> so that reaction play, tells me that you will it, not be getting off. It, well, it's just it's playoff time, so we never you never know. Oh, okay. I mean, just tell them they don't get it. It's, it's, you guys, uh, no, you guys I just don't get it. Get okay. It. And nothing happens until the hour before the trade time. Exactly. Oh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. All right. You um, want to be up at two o'clock? No. 
uh, finally going. Everyone, to everyone, come to my house for uh, six in the morning. Man, we haven't been to your house to record the podcast in a while. It's been a while. Pre-COVID was the last time. Pretty That's much. So, um, shout out to. Let's see. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. There's one thing we needed to mention. One thing we needed to mention. Uh, shout out to Yarmir Yager. Celebrated. This is from TSN. They put this on Twitter. Uh, Yager celebrated his 51st birthday about a week early by scoring his 1,099th um, goal to overtake Wayne Gretzky at the t- top of the. This is pro goals on NHL goals. Um, I just thought that was really funny to imagine. Still Congrats. going strong in the in the Czech league. That's crazy. Him and, him and Thomas Mechanic still cover, still carrying the team. I love That's that. So funny. That's crazy. Can I ask another question before we end? Sure. LeBron James. What Yo, happens so, when he passes the record? Does he? Do they play tonight? Yeah, 10 p.m. against Shea Alexander and the OKC Thunder. What is he, is he like, 38 s- points behind? 36, 36, right? Yeah. So, good night, he can do it. It's a good chance. Oh, yeah. Does, but what does happens he, when he does? Don't pass the so, ball, LeBron. Here's the thing. He has to He has to pass on a skyhook, right? <laughs> he has to. He was practicing it a couple of weeks ago, and everyone's oh, like, oh, amazing. no. And he kept yeah. missing, so everyone's like, oh, this is going to be. It's going to be tough. Just, just do you, LeBron. You do Don't you, worry. LeBron. Yeah, he, he's definitely what? keeping track of every little point. Oh, or he's got LeBron. someone on the bench doing it. That was, a, but, that was a, uh, a media bait. He's just doing a skyhook because he's on yeah, people watching. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What does that make him if he passes Kareem? Uh, Kareem, sorry. Get a um, winning a record second. in the finals and maybe you're on MG's level. One in of the best to ever play. One of the best. So, he's, so even if he... Okay. Even if he does not, even if he passes, I'm just asking. Mm-hmm. I'm just asking the question. Don't get mad at me. No. If he passes Kareem, no. Is he the goat? No. No, he's still in the top five, but he's not the goat. Jordan's six and zero in the finals in the six-time Finals Epi. No. Now my goat takes have been pretty suspect to yeah, some of my friends. Yeah, I was, I was going to say the game of hockey, but like, I come on, say. you can't be the go with a losing record in the finals. I you can't let that happen. There's a level of greatness that Michael Jordan had, and obviously, I'm a little young, but like, and and obviously, you shouldn't just take the last dance purely on this thing because there is some Jordan fingers in it. We can say, yeah, a little bit, but like the numbers speak for themselves, you know. I just don't, doesn't mean anything. But how me. about those first round losses? Man? Uh, I also have a hot take right just now. Ask him. Yeah, I have a hot take, it. okay. Michael Jordan is the reason why other countries are competitive in the Olympics and the FIBA tournaments. Oh, basketball hmm. is not what it is without Michael Jordan. I think that's, I think that's pretty safe to say. I'm not going to go too much deeper because I think we would need to have our good friend Will Baldwin on to talk, or Donald no. Hick, the NBA, to talk about that. Yeah, but, I, I love uh, that you have to also put NBA in his. Like every time I read that about, in the text, it makes me laugh. Yeah, man. Do you actually still read that? That's group? I read it sometimes too. Yeah, if I see Donald you messaging, I'm like, oh, okay, it, Donald. It's it's my favorite thing to wake up in the morning and see what sort of. Madness. Uh, how do I describe this? Madness. Uh, Madness. Yeah, whatever. Matt, it's my favorite thing to wake up in the morning. I'm like, ooh, it's happened here. That's a that's or a good, Mike trying yeah. to gaslight me. Yeah, yeah, so sometimes exactly. I usually have my phone on do not disturb, and like that's like right. so I just have my alarm, and Same. then I don't check my phone probably until nine or ten when I start work. And then I'm like, why are there so many messages? Why do I have a thousand messages on <laughs> red? <laughs> It's why, because it will go quiet after like 11 sometimes. And then Will and Mike are randomly up at like two in the morning. It's like, why? And I'll wake up and I'll see the times. Like, I, I went to bed at one and, and it was quiet. What happened? It's know. it's a different kind of animal, that group chat. Um, yeah, Who's that's, winning the Super Bowl? Oh, yeah. That's, the, uh, dude. I don't know. The Kansas City Chiefs. I'm also going for the Chiefs. Sure. Patrick let's... Mahomes is a two-way athlete. He was also drafted Patrick... in the Bring it home. Yes. Wait, who is was he... he drafted by? The 
I forgot. He was drafted in the fourth round, so that's pretty high for a guy you're not expected to make it to the <sighs> league. Wait, Patty Mahomes wasn't a suit. I mean, <laughs> he was his like dad a was a baseball player. In NBA history were out of nowhere. One was drafted by a baseball team. Yeah, a lot. It happens a lot to baseball players, uh, uh, football players, because they get drafted out of high school because they play both sports. Bro- brothers, brothers, did you see the dude who found where Brady put his retirement video? Got a thing of the sand and was selling it for like <laughs> it's like a hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> Some people are wild. Yeah, a good, good deal. Um, shout out to him getting basically future endeavored by his ex wife. That was pretty funny. Uh, Giselle was, was like, funny. I wish you the best in your future. It was like, wow, that's no, that's no. like getting future endeavored by yeah, your <laughs> That's tough. That's really tough. Oh. I was going to say something. She didn't have to do that, but still. It was kind of funny. Yeah. My last yeah. basketball Hoopla. question. Okay. Yeah. Raptors, sellers? Or do they sellers. stand bad? Okay. You better be. That's you it. That's my question. Be, that's my question. Uh, just to do well and just get it. who's the who's the front runner in the East Boston? Is it Boston Milwaukee? Yeah, yeah. I was and gonna then, say Brooklyn, but no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh man, what a, is there a, a joke? More hyped failure ever than the Brooklyn Nets? Yeah, that was a tough one. That was uh, awful. We will always have our memories of the big three for eight. What was it eight, eight games? The, yeah. That's hilarious, man. All right. Uh, th- that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. Yeah, wrap it up. Wrap it up. All right. Now we're going to, now that we have Daniel back, Alex and I don't have to spend 10 minutes trying to figure out a name for the episode. Exactly. All right. Goodbye.